on my channel. So a social club I belong to is having a chili cook-off tomorrow. So I figured this was a perfect opportunity to make my chili out of my little black cookbook. And uh, I'll enter it tomorrow and we'll see how we do. So let's get started. This is my chili recipe. Okay, so this is a crock pot recipe. So I'm gonna set my crock pot on high. And the first thing I like to do is get my big uh, ingredient items out of the way. So I got a couple uh, 28 ounce uh, petite diced tomatoes. So we'll get them in there. Juice and all, I don't strain this. <clears throat> like I said, there's two of them. Next is the beans. Now, I do drain these, but I don't rinse them. Uh, the little bit of bean starch that's in there, I think I find that it uh, helps stick in the chili up later in the cooking process. Okay, then we'll get them in there. And this is a big can, it's a 40, 40 ounce can of beans. All right, now we'll get on to our vegetables. I like to have a little bowl like this to put my vegetable trimmings in, keep you from having to go back and forth to the, keep you from having to go back and forth to the uh, trash can too much. So we're gonna trim off both ends and then the top layer of the onion. And then I just rinse it off real quick. Okay, now this isn't diced but it's not really uh, coarsely chopped either. It's somewhere in between diced and chopped, I would say, on the onion. And get one more little slice in there. Get the other half in. I like to use a red onion. Uh, it's a little more flavorful and also it brings a, a different color to the predominantly red, reddish brown chili color. Okay, and then we're gonna add four peppers. I'm using green and red peppers. Uh, it helps with the flavor profile a little bit. And then the green again adds more, a little more color to the, to the chili. Now I already rinsed and washed these before I started filming. And because it's chili, I'm not really worried about if a couple, couple pepper seeds get in there. Okay. And then we're gonna chop these up about the same as we did the uh, about the same as we did the onion.
Now we'll give it a, a little bit of a stir at this point. Okay. Now let's get our seasoning in. Okay. We're going to start with five tablespoons of chili powder. One, two, three, four, five. Then we're going to get one teaspoon of black pepper. We're going to do a healthy tablespoon, a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic. I know it seems like a lot of garlic, uh, but I find that minced garlic doesn't have the, the, uh, the kick that fresh does. So the recipe calls for two cloves. If I'm using mince, I put about a heaping tablespoon in. Okay, because every chili recipe needs a secret ingredient, mine is two tablespoons of cocoa powder. I know it sounds crazy, but it adds to the texture, and believe it or not, it really adds to the flavor, and you do not taste the chocolate, uh, the cocoa, after it's cooked. But it makes a huge difference in the flavor. All right, let's get this stirred up. Now that we have all the vegetables and seasoning in, Time for the last step for this chili is to brown the ground beef. Mine does have ground beef in it. Okay, let's get this beef browned. So we got two pounds here. And first we're gonna do is we're gonna break it up. just to keep the splatter down. We'll let it sizzle there for a few minutes. Okay, it's been sizzling for a few minutes. Let's, uh, now what you wanna do is just kinda see if you can't get the meat turned over so that the red side's down and the brown side's up as best you can. It ain't gonna be perfect. Okay. And then we're gonna break it up some more. You want to break that up as fine as possible. It'll be easier the more it cooks, the easier it is to break it up. The great thing about chili is it really lends itself to adaption. Uh, you can make this chili recipe with ground turkey or ground chicken. Uh, I know there's the great debate about chili, whether beans are supposed to be on it, in it or not. I equate it to the same argument that the Italians have about whether it's tomato sauce or tomato gravy. Uh, I don't agree with the idea that, oh, if it's got beans in it, it's not chili. I don't like chili without beans in it, personally. Uh, you could also make this with uh, cubed chuck or any other kind of steak that you want to use it with. I usually make it with the ground, ground beef, though. But I usually use either 80 or 85%. This is 85%, two pounds of 85% ground beef. All right, so we will let that simmer a little while longer. Okay, let's turn this and break it up some more. Another thing with this chili, if you want a spicier chili, you could add a little bit of cayenne pepper. I wouldn't do too much, maybe a half a teaspoon. You could add some diced up long hots in here or diced up jalapenos. I've done it in the past. Uh, but you better make sure whoever you're making the chili for likes spicy if you start adding long hots or habaneros or anything like that. But you could always change the, pro uh, the flavor and temperature profile 
by temperature I mean spiciness, not heat-wise, of your chili just by adjusting some of your ingredients. I like to do it with hotter peppers as opposed to the cayenne because it's a little more flavorful. Okay, this is looking good. I think we're almost done. I'm gonna let it brown a little bit longer. Then we will get this into the pot. Cover her back up again. This little screen I'm using, it's got the holes in it uh, to let the moisture come off, but it keeps the splatter down so I don't have to clean my stove every single time I brown anything. Okay, last look. Main thing you want to do is make sure you don't see any red. And you want to make sure it's, it's broken up pretty good. A few bigger chunks is okay. All right, that looks good. So let's get this into the chili pot. This is our last ingredient. Turn the fire off. Okay, let's get this ground beef into the pot. Now you want to strain this to get all that extra fat out of it. So what I like to do is, there's all different kinds of ways. I could push this all to the side and tip it and use a paper towel. Uh, I could find some kind of lid and try and pour it out into the sink. I just like to use my slotted spoon to do it. And to make sure I don't make a mess, rather than trying to push it to the sides, I use my spatula to push up against. And you just want to strain it. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. You just want the worst of that fat. Yeah. Now, you might think, well, I'll just buy, you know, 90 or 95% fat-free. I find that the beef doesn't have the flavor. Uh, I've always been disappointed when I've used the uh, leaner beef. So even though I'm straining off the fat, uh, the beef itself tastes better, I, I feel. Okay, now that we got the beef in there, we want to mix this up really well. Now, if you notice, I put all the seasoning in when all the vegetables are in. Right now, this starts to thicken up when you add the, the beef and the pot's much fuller. It'd be a lot harder to get all them seasonings well mixed into your chili if you had not waited till now to do it. So that's why I do it in between. I get the veggies in there, get the seasoning in there, brown the beef, and there you go. All right, so we got this on high. Now I'm gonna leave this on high until it starts to simmer. Once it starts to simmer, I cut it back to low. Uh, one problem with chili or anytime you have beans in the recipe, if you leave it boiling too high for too long, the beans start to break up, which you don't want. So we're gonna let this go. But the last thing we wanna do before we call it quits on our recipe is take your recipe and run down your list. Make sure you got everything in it. So we got the ground beef in there. We got the tomatoes in there. We got the beans in there, chili powder. Uh, we skipped the cayenne pepper for this one. Uh, cocoa's in there, black pepper's in there, uh, all of our bell peppers are in there, our onion's in there. We're skipping the jalapeno peppers and the long hots for this one, and our garlic's in there. So, so check. All of our ingredients is in the chili, and it's ready to just slow cook, and your house is going to smell wonderful. All right, we'll come back a little later and we'll see how it's doing. Okay, so we've been cooking for a little while. Let's take a look. Okay. If you look right here, you can see we're just starting to simmer. Okay, so we're going to start this up. We're going to kick this down to low at this point. And then we're going to let this cook on low until all the onions and peppers are nice and tender. Okay? Now, chili's always better the next day. So whenever possible, make it the day before you plan on eating it. And hopefully you can resist after you smell it cooking all day. OK, 
Okay, but we're gonna cook this till it's tender, then we'll refrigerate overnight and we'll reheat it tomorrow for the uh, chili cook-off and we'll see how we do. All right, guys, I'm set up for the cook-off. There's five entrants. I am number five. There's a look at the finished chili. I got a little cheddar cheese as an accompaniment and some some Tostitos. So let's see how we do. So when all the tasting was done and the votes were counted, I came in third place. So I hope you liked my video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.